Hey lovelies, it is a sweet, uh, slightly cool spring evening. Uh, and I have a hankering. I've got some dogs here that are wanting attention. So I'm outside and it's a little bit noisy, which I hope you don't mind. Um, I have this hankering to kind of launch officially something that I've been trying to do for a little while now, uh, which is to create a series of 22 videos about 22 new tarot spreads, uh, each one related to, you guessed it, one of the major arcana. This is part of the work that I've been doing for my uh, second book with Llewellyn, uh, a book called Tarot Bones, where I'm thinking about the bones of tarot, the underlying structure of tarot, what makes the tarot such a powerful spiritual tool, uh, what gives it the kind of mm, framework and stability and substantiality that allows it to be a key that so many other traditions can layer their uh, frameworks upon. So, you know, astrology or Kabbalah or numerology or alchemical systems or Jungian structures or, oh, I don't know, the I Ching or pretty much any Buddhist teachings, uh, pretty much any world system can be layered upon the 78 cards. And that is because the 78 cards themselves, the tarot itself already has baked right into it as a uh, result of its history, its emergence in uh, early modern Europe at the kind of crossroads of the Islamic East and the sort of Christianized West, it baked right into it at, as the legacy, as the heritage of that history is a structure that's simple but profound. Okay, so that's what Tarot Bones lays out. And part of what Tarot Bones lays out and part of what I work on with the uh, cohort members in the Mindful Tarot Certificate Program information below, uh, is this notion that the tarot actually teaches us how to read tarot, particularly the major arcana. The way in which each of the cards in the major arcana carry within them, structured right into the arrangement of the symbolic elements of the picture, each of those cards carry within them uh, a visual representation, not just of the meaning of the card, but how the card helps us understand the dynamic movement of a human life. So each of the cards give us a kind of roadmap for how the card's meaning uh, maps onto a human life as it unfolds in time and space. So, you know, a easy example of this is the very first spread that I ever created based on the major arcana imagery, and that is my chariot spread. Very simple three card spread. You know, the chariot card uh, has this core meaning of, you know, will and moving forward and momentum, uh, drive, initiative. Uh, I often think of the will card as a card that is talking about our ability to power through a situation and to hitch our uh, movement to like a higher purpose. I think very much about the will card as a, a seven card and as a card that marries the stability of the four, that four-cornered platform that uh, the chariot itself uh, embodies with the upward force, the, the growth-directed force of threeness. Um, and that dynamic growth energy comes from the ways in which this is a card about balance, about how we balance competing forces between the white sphinx and the dark sphinx, between our uh, more spirited, more noble side and our maybe our more uh, sensual uh, base or id-oriented side. You know, as I've said many times before, of many as many other people have said before, the, the chariot card brings forward this notion, going back to Plato, this image of the human psyche as a chariot where our uh, kind of ego balances out the force between id and superego, to put it in Freudian terms, where our self kind of balances out our uh, uh, desire for instant gratification with our higher purpose. So a chariot spread, three card spread, that looks at the ways in which uh, we might be trying to balance forces, right? It uses the imagery of that card to help us create a spread, to create a reading that will enliven us 
with actual momentum in our lives. So a card that is about human momentum and how we work from conflict or tension toward greater unity and growth, that card, if we take its visual elements and create a spread, will help us do a reading that is equally addressing momentum and movement forward, okay? So, long way of saying, let's test drive the tarot. And that's in fact what I want this uh, series of videos to be. Let's test drive the tarot by generating in uh, you know, pretty much real time, generating new spreads based on the major arcana and using them for the first time with you. And just to make it even more fun, I'm gonna use a deck that I've never used before each time. One of my brand new decks, or brand new, that's a relative term. I have my stash of decks, right? Uh, decks that I've purchased over the past six months or so. And I'm gonna use one of those decks, feature one of those decks each time I test drive the tarot. You ready? Let's test drive the tarot. 